are writing. And so we also have it on the monitors as well. If you look at our monitors, we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 through 18. That's Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 through 18. And if you have it, it's also going to be on the monitors. Is it working back there? I want to make sure. Okay, good. And so Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 and 18. Let's begin to read the word of God. It says, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him, Lift up now thy eyes and look from God to help us and we're going to pray and the Lord will put this in our spirit as the Lord has taken us to the next level we are going to take dominion in this city let's begin to pray Father God we thank you for your mercy thank you for your love and your kindness Father we thank you for what you've already done and Lord God that which is coming is greater and Lord we thank you for just for allowing us to be involved these families, Lord God, are in the house of God. They are beautiful families. And you love them, God. That's why you have them here today. Father, we can be doing so many other things. If we can look back over our lives, Lord God, just even yesterday or a couple of years. to take dominion. All right, some people are not talking, so let's do it one more time. Let's say it real loud. It's time to take dominion. It's time to take dominion. Amen, amen. It is time to take dominion. And so what am I saying when I say that, time to take dominion? Well, let's look at the definition of dominion. Sovereignty, control, the territory of sovereign or government. That means what I'm telling you today, that God has given us. God. He's raising up families and young men and fathers to be able to. He's raising up women and wives to be able to take and defeat this enemy. We are now in a position where God has said, I'm ready for you now. I poured into you. You're under leadership. You're under guidance. You want, you have a thirst for righteousness. Now it's time to take dominion. Which means that I'm not going to stay where I am right now. Where you are right now, God has said, I have some territory for you. I have an inheritance for you. I have something for you. But I'm not just going to hand it. You have to go in and take dominion. The devil is not going to give it up easy to you. That devil will not just say, oh, you want it? Oh. 
okay, let me just back up off of it. Oh, you want your children to be saved? Oh, okay. that will oppose you. So you might say, Pastor, all of this stuff is starting to happen to me. My family just got baptized and I just got the Holy Ghost and crazy stuff is happening. That is because the devil is trying to oppose you. He's coming up against you. And when you were at the altar and you were praying and the Holy Ghost was right there and you was about to receive it, but then all of a sudden doubt came to your head and you begin to say, you know what? Hold on, I'll just wait a little bit and I'll just hold on for a second. That doubt, that devil does not want you to tap into who you are. Once you begin to tap into who you are, it is dangerous for him. It is dangerous when you tap in. I don't know what gifts you have. I don't know what God has given you. I don't know what God has poured into you. But when you tap into who God wants you to be, I'm telling you, it is. Because if you're satisfied with the, what you're getting right now, I'm satisfied with this minimum wage. And I'm, I'm satisfied with this crazy relationship. Uh, he don't want to marry me no way. And she don't want to, but I'm just going to stick with me because I need a man. Or, or I just want somebody to have somebody relationship with. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with this mindset. I'm satisfied where I'm living. I'm, I'm satisfied where my life is. I'm, I'm satisfied. If you're satisfied, then you stand there. But I just believe that there's somebody to say, listen, I'm not satisfied where I am. I'm not satisfied where I am. I want more from God. I want what he promised me. I want what he said. When he told me, son, when I fix your life, I'll begin to add. And you won't have enough room to receive. If that's what you said, God, I want to see it. I want to see it.
not satisfied living in Big Old Lake, Clueless, and South Bay. I'm not satisfied working from these. And I understand some of these jobs, we start off with them, but I'm not satisfied with them. If I start at McDonald's, I want to own McDonald's. If I start there, I need some franchises. You said this about money? No, I'm going to talk about money. I'm talking about dominion. I'm talking about not staying where you are right now. I'm talking to the young man. I'm telling him, listen, I went to college. I graduated. I got a degree. You can do it too. You ain't got to catch no football. Good if you do. But if you don't, put your mind to it. Go to school. Get your grades right. Live for God. And I guarantee you, God will bless you. Don't be satisfied with what you got. that's getting scraps. I don't serve a God that gives me scraps. I don't serve a God that just say, just take that and you go about your business and you go in there. Enough is enough. That's slavery mentality. That's been enslaving. That's slavery mentality that you just take the scraps and you just take it. Just take whatever we give you. The devil is alive. I ain't taking whatever he want to give me. I want what the master, what my God, what my father. He's a good father and he's never forsaken me. And I've never seen that with the, 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 the right of the back of the prayer. I'm telling you, if you want God to be your father, you stand on the side and take dominion. Because when you look at the book of Revelation, as I've read it before, I told you before, in the book of Revelation, you deserve to go. I said, what in the world is that? That if you go to hell, to the lake of fire that was not made for you, but it was made for the devil and his angels and these false prophets, it was not made for you. But if you go to hell, he says you deserve to go. I don't, I'm not going to hell. It wasn't made for me. Me and heat don't get along. I'm sweating right now. I need some water spray on me. I don't get along with heat. I don't know how I came to the floor. I'm like, this is ridiculous. It's, 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 it's nighttime and it's 80 to 90 degrees outside. Something is crazy going on around up in this atmosphere. So I know I can't take the heat that's going to be down there. And so when he said that, I said, man, that, that's... If you don't want to come to church, if you want to stay in that relationship, if you want to be involved in that and do this and do that and keep God and put him on the back end and not trust him and feel like you still want a little bit of the world, I'm telling him, he said, you deserve to go to hell. That's hard. But after all that God has done, the blood that he shed on the cross, Dying on the cross for my sins and paid the price. He said, I, I wrote the check and the check cashed. I wrote what.
what you could not pay for, God said, I want the check and the check cash. Your sins, if you come to me, they will be forgiven. Just do what I tell you to do. I'm going to save you. But I cannot go against my word if you decide you don't want it. If you are, if you open up your eyes and you're sitting there in hell, you will know you put yourself in. You said you didn't want me. You said you wasn't ready. You said you didn't trust me. You said it. So God said, listen, I tried to give you something, but you don't want it. But those who want it, it's time to take dominion. But I'm not talking about money or finances, but in the spiritual and we have to change the way that we think. Tell your neighbor, we got to change the way we think. To get with God's program or for our life, we got to change the way that we think. I can't think like I've always thought. I can't think the way I used to think yesterday or yesterday or last week or last month. I got to change my mind. I got to start to say, Lord, whatever your will is, let's do that. You know greater than I do. They shot up all on the left hand side and I remember hearing my brother screaming calling my name because I'm sitting on the left side of the car and when it began to go off all I could hear was call my name but when the car the car is swerving and they still you still hear the gunshots and that's the life you live by the sword you don't die by the sword is what I'm telling you and when I begin to live like that and I had people praying for me mama was praying for me brothers in the church was praying praying for sister Carmen's sons and Lord save them my granddaddy bishop Oh, C. Gunner, who I'm named after. I, he, he might have died. He didn't get a chance to see me today preaching the word of God. But I know if he was still living today, he would be worshiping God. Because I got the name for a reason. I'm not calling myself a bishop. No way. I'm a servant. But now I'm preaching the word of God. The one that had an attitude. The one that had anger. The one that wanted to put it out on you. The one that wanted to sell to you. The one that will stand up and act.
be willing to take over everything. Everything. I'm not trying to coexist. I'm not trying to say, devil, you stay on that side and I'll stay on this side. No. Whatever you got on that side, I want that too. You over here, you gotta move from here too. You too close to my family. You too close to my daughter. Get on up out of here. You too close to my finances. Get out of here. You too close to this. Get out of here. But thou shall utterly destroy them. Namely, who are we destroying? God, the Ites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hebites, and the Jebusites. And the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Look at the Bible, speak about it. God said it's time to destroy them. Don't try to live among them. Don't try to coexist with them. It's time for you to destroy that foolishness. That's in your home. That's in your life. Own your child. Let's take the children. It's time to destroy it. And don't become friends. You gotta destroy that thing like David did. They don't want
I knew of one person and I knew him over the phone. And that was Minister Corinthians. I only knew him over the phone. <laughs> I didn't ever see him before and I didn't know who he was. But he seemed like a man of God through the phone. I said, well, let me meet him. <laughs> and now we get to meet him. Once I met him, I said, all right, yeah, we are in good company with the, with the Corinthians family. And so I say, I thank God. And so we get down to there. And don't you understand that God will never show you the full picture. He won't give it to you all that what's going to be done. He just tells you, pack up your stuff and move and begin to walk. You say, where are we going? Just walk and I'll give you the thing. But a lot of times what we would do is say, God, you got to pour it all out to me. You got to tell me how we're going to start it, what's going to be in the middle, what's going to happen on second chapter, what's on the second verse.
You better step out on that word. Once God give you the word, you don't need nothing else. All you need to say is what? You said it, daddy? That's right, I said it. Start to move. I don't need no visions. I don't need no fake prophets. I don't need no fake apostles. I don't need no evangelists to come in. I got the word from the Lord. And I got it from the scriptures. That's all I need. God give me the word, and that's what we're going to do. Just give me the word. Look at Isaiah 55 verse 11. So shall my word be that going forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing where. I had some pizza last night, but I don't think it was the pizza. I just got a good feeling. No, no, no. I'm under submission. I'm under that divine alignment of my vision, my pastor. And the Lord has given me the Holy Ghost in the discernment as well. God is leading and guiding me. 
and he has men around me to hold me accountable. That's why I tell all the brothers and sisters in the house of God, if you claim that you got the Holy Ghost, I'm holding you accountable to that Holy Ghost. And so with people around me, and so I've got to be led by the Holy Ghost. Because when I'm led by the Holy Ghost, other people are going to look at me and say, that man retarded. How do you think he's going to come here? There's a whole bunch of church. Matter of fact, there's a church already bigger than his church. There's a church already bigger. Why when I preach, I preach like a trumpet. I can't be quiet in this thing. I can't be like a little cherry church mouse. And say, you got to be safe. You need to be close. Don't tell nobody. Don't, don't tell nobody that you come to new life. Tell everybody that you come to new life. Tell everybody what I say. There ain't no church in Bell Bay but new life that's preaching truth. Hear what I'm telling you now. I don't care what they got to say. I don't care how they got to say it. I'm telling you where the word of God is coming from. But look at the word of God. Look at what it says. Then he gave orders to the people. Look at what the man of God does. March around the town. And the armed man will lead the way in front of the ark of the Lord. Go down to verse 14. I'm church in the car right now. On my way to work. I'm praying and passing right now. But look at what the Bible tells me here. It says, but this time they went around the town seven times. The seventh time around that the priest sounded a long blast on the horns. Come on, sis, why need somebody on the drums? Where you at? Sis, get on the drums for me real quick, please. Come on, get on the drums for me real quick. That we may be getting the sound. Get ready for that thing that's not going. I need everybody to stand up on your feet right now. Because we don't know the sound of the trumpet. We are about to take the making right now. I'm not trying to give you a pretty sermon, and I'm not losing my voice for nothing. What I'm saying is what I meant. I'm telling you right now, we don't blow the trumpet.
Wherever you walk, and wherever you go, throughout the city of Bellevue, we're coming to a near you. There's a church coming near you, and there's a Jesus name church. A one Lord, one faith, and one baptism church. We may believe in the Holy Ghost and the living of the speaking in tongues. Baptize in everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. The Acts chapter 238 church is coming to God's word. That's why I'm not a liar, prophet, because I'm going to give you what he says. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, you want dominion, this is what you got to do. You want your family have dominion, this is what you got to teach them, brothers, fathers, mothers. You got to let them know, baby, this is what you need. You need this thing tonight. Tell them, you need this tonight, baby. Don't leave out of here. You need this tonight. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Somebody begin to pray right now, because somebody have a doubt. Somebody get ready to walk out the door. But listen, those who didn't walk out this morning got the Holy Ghost. So you need the Holy Ghost if you want to be saved and go to heaven. The 
don't. You lie to yourself and say you got it and you don't. This is what it says. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. In But they will not, cannot, nor complain. But they get what they get. 